o'clock. I'd like to call this Wapaka County Highway Committee meeting in order. It's 9 a.m. Thursday, May 13th. Due to COVID-19, this meeting is conducted under Wapaka County Resolution Number 8, 2020-21. This meeting will broadcast for remote access and live stream on YouTube. This meeting may inadvertently cause a quorum of other committee or the County Board of Supervisors. No business decisions of any other committee or the Board of Supervisors will be conducted at this meeting. Participation is permitted. The meeting will be conducted using the CCC and DHS guidance regarding social distancing. Tables and chairs will be arranged accordingly and face coverings are encouraged. This meeting and all of the meetings of this committee are open to the public. Proper notice has been posted and given to the media in accordance with the Wisconsin statutes. So the citizenry may be aware of the time, place, and agenda of this meeting. For roll call, all members are present. I'd like uh, you to review and approve the agenda. Move to approve. Okay. Motion by Jim Nygaard, second by Fred Zog. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Minutes of previous meeting of April 29th, 2021. I need a motion to approve. I move to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Motion by Fred Zog. Uh, seconded by Jim Nygaard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Public comment? There's no one here. Casey, do you have anything to say? No. Uh, no. Okay. Moving forward, review and approve the payment vouchers. All right. The payment batch registered dated April 30th, 2021. Um, starts off with accurate alignment and frame uh, bill for $2,781.60 charged to our unit 1136. Next one, all lift systems had invoice for $1,200 for overhead crane and gantry inspections. It's an annual inspection that got charged to our shop supplies account. Alpha Hydraulics had an invoice for $3,851.75. Most of it was charged to our, or some of it was to our stock account. The other was direct charges to units 1551 and 1666. Applied maintenance supplies and solutions had an invoice for $1,070.87 charged to shop supplies for aerosol paint. That's all the paint that we used over the summer for spraying pink and blue and yellow and um, on our construction jobs. Next is county materials had uh, a bill for us for $9,951.80 for concrete culverts that we purchased, which are being placed on the County Highway O project, right at the intersection of Denison. And then the other one is at County Highway Q, which is at the intersection of Highway V and Q. Um, we do put concrete culverts underneath areas where we pour curb and gutter over the top of them because it seems like after 15, 20 years, the metal ones are shot and then we'd have to rip the curb apart to get to them. And now if we just put concrete in from the start, the last, hopefully a lifetime or my lifetime. Um, next one is the invoice for energy solution partners was for purchasing diesel fuel at our Helvetia New London account for $36,557.92. Fabic Cat had a bill for $3,603.52 charged to unit 91T. And then um, the big thumb on the excavator was swinging into the off-road truck and it got dented. And so that's where that a portion of it went to is we had to fix that hydraulic cylinder. Falks Brothers had an invoice for $1,014.55. That was for three quarter inch gravel on County Highway Q. Go Green Recycling had an invoice for $1,123.01, all billed to the town of Caledonia, town of Wyoiga, and the town of Royalton. Um, Gratian gets rid of our garbage for $1,835.25, split between our buildings and grounds account and our state RMA account. Um, Great Lakes Roofing had done some roof repairs at our new London shop for $4,000. That was charged to our buildings and grounds account. 
Green Bay Highway Products had an invoice for $4,166.32 billed out to the town of Wyoming for some pipes on Peterson Road that have all been installed. Lane Enterprises had a bill for $4,323.32 charged to our stock account for delineators. Delineators are the small little posts that you see on Highway 10. Some of them get bumped with the snowplow over the winter. Uh, Lycon had a bill for $2,132.55 charged to our County Highway Q project. And then they gave us or are giving us a credit back for $307.20. They billed us for it. Jan caught it. And now on our next billing to them, they're going to refund us that. They weren't supposed to bill us for that part of it. Uh, Martinson and Isley are an engineering firm that designed Woodland Hills subdivision in the town of Caledonia. And so um, we paid for it for $1,800 and then we bill it back to the town of Caledonia. Um, MCC had a bill for $3,807.60 for some three quarter inch gravel charged to our stock account, the town of Little Wolf, state RMA and section three. A lot of that's just for shoulder repairs where we pulled up our shoulders and some spots at intersections were low. So our shoulder belt truck touches them up. Mid-States Equipment had an invoice for $4,640.79 charged to our stock account in unit 755. Miller Bradford and Reesburg Inc. had a bill for $6,450.11 charged to units 121T and unit 116. Uh, Pine River Group supplies us with sign posts that we use for putting up signs. And that bill went to our stock account for $11,119.20. Um, just because I'm touching on that, uh, the town of Wapaka just hired us to replace all of their signs. And so we uh, got them in the program to have a $10,000 contract with us to start overseeing all of the town of Wapaka's signs. So um, we're, we're taking on a lot of townships, overall sign maintenance, which is huge. It's been you talking about signs. You know, the stop signs where you, where you put the uh, solar lights on, is that a real expensive situation? And should that be recommended to townships and as well as everybody? Or, you know what I'm saying? You know how? Yeah, to use a solar panel to um, create enough battery charge to make that blinking stoplight, we, we, um, try to not encourage a whole lot of people to do with it because my experience is they get stolen a lot and that $1,500 expense just disappears because people steal your solar panels. Okay. So that's why I don't really want to encourage a whole okay. lot, even on our county. That answers my question. Yep, they get stolen at night. and That's, in, that's ridiculous, <laughs> but I understand. That, that, that happened to us a few times in Shano and it, didn't ha it did not happen in the village of or Caroline because it's more residential and it's illuminated at night, but everywhere else they walk away. Hmm. That's sad. Yeah. Uh, Reister and Schnell had an invoice for $1,153.72 charged to unit 209, 209, I'm sorry, 209T, 210 T in our stock account. Sherwin Industries um, sold us a lot of crack filling material, charged to our stock account for $20,891.23. A lot of that's being invoiced out to our towns right now. Uh, Sugar Creek Farms owns property on County Highway N phase two. We paid $2,800 charged to the end job, um, which I just got confirmation that County Highway N phase two's property acquisition is complete. So them, I don't know, what was it 37 landowners we've been working with is done. The only thing that we haven't gotten back yet was a mortgage release on like two of the properties, but we've given Solaris and We Energies the green light to move forward with moving all their utilities so it's ready for next year. So US Cellular had a bill for $1,261.90 charged to our buildings and grounds account and state RMA. Uh, Wapaka County Sheriff compensated for their time enforcing uh, our spring weight limits for $7,945.90. We build this to section two, um, just because it's helping prevent maintenance on 
road damages. So we, we put it into the maintenance category of where we, we, we spent it. So, which is typical of every other year. But um, that the $10,000 we gave them, they just didn't reach that. Maybe it was a shorter spring weight limit season or they didn't have as many people on it, but we didn't have much for citations either. So this year was quiet. Westwood Professional Services, which is the old Omni, uh, sent their invoices for $11,010 charged back to the County Highway N Phase 2 project for real estate negotiations and then the County Highway O project. Um, American Asphalt of Wisconsin had a bill for $28,229.64 and that was for purchasing cold mix for fixing the potholes during the um, spring breakup and now we're, we're back we're fully stocked with cold mix so the total payment batch register this time is $191,401.96 motion to approve is I'll second it got a motion by Lee Muck second by Dick Rowan for the approval of $191,401.96 all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, agenda item number two is kind of a follow-up from a project that took place 15 years ago when County Highway K um, south of Wapaka was rebuilt from Parfaitville Road south down to Rural Road. Um, the previous group uh, had real estate, real estate negotiations and there was one negotiation that was made um, that was if the county highway department doesn't need the property and the property owner wants to build a house, can they acquire land back from the highway department, which here's the end results. It's going to county board for, uh, I believe, formal approval next weekend, right, Diane, or next Tuesday? Yeah, that, that's correct. So this, yep. so, and it, so she did a lot of work on it. So I'm gonna let you kind of talk about where you're at with it. Yeah, perfect. So um, the highway committee and the commissioner have a lot of authority to negotiate land purchase for the purposes of the, the highway, county highway trunk system. Um, but the highway committee or and uh, the commissioner don't have authority to negotiate um, purchase or sale of land for other purposes. So um, even though the highway committee approved the sale price uh, for the sale uh, to Kim Schrader of this uh, former right of way, and then the retention of the permanent li limited easement for highway uh, purposes, it needs to be formally uh, acted on at the full board level. So, um, so I put together the re resolution that memorializes um, the understanding between the parties um, as negotiated by the highway committee um, there will be a quit, quit, quit claim deed, hard to say that, um, and then uh, as well as a written agreement memorializing all the steps of why the transfer was, why we purchased from them, why we're um, selling it back to them, and then the uh, survey work that was done by um, the certified surveyor um, that was recorded uh, to uh, reflect the, the, the legal description and the land that's being transferred at that four, three, six acres. So it, it will, it needs to be recommended by the highway committee to go up to the full board. So it's just really the, the, the uh, gift wrapping of the work that's already been done. So I need a motion to approve this resolution. 10, sale of county right away, retention of permanent. Well, I'll, make that motion. I'll second it. I got a motion by Fred Zog, a second by Jim Nygaard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Diane. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank Before you. Before you move on, Diane, yep. I'm just seeing that we have two different numbers. We have 0.36 and 0.26. So I'm going to have to, I'm, I believe it's 0.426, right? In I, paragraph four, it says 0.436. And then in the last paragraph, it says 0.426, and I'm sorry I didn't see that before, oh, but. Okay, yeah, I'll make that. You, I think 0.436 is correct. I can look on the survey map as well. I think it's two, but. Two. Okay, we'll I'll, I'll make that uh, correction then. Um, any chance you can email that to me so I can grab signatures on the way out? Yep, you bet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Thanks for coming. Item number three, permission to bid, concrete, sand, snowplow, cutting edges, and propane. <clears throat> yep. And so um, our highway department is already setting ourselves up for this coming winter. I don't want to talk about it yet, but we, we like bidding out our, our, our sand for winter. Um, we have to bid out our cutting edges and um, the propane that's utilized at the Helvetia shop, of which I believe we have two uh, 1,000 gallon tanks out there. So I need permission just to do that as we do annually. I'll still move. Second. All in favor or right. motion by Lee Zog, second, second by Fred Zog, all in favor. <laughs> Lee Muck, <laughs> by Fred Zog, all in favor. Don't swear. Aye. Opposed? Well, motion carried. Like <laughs> you've been much much a lot worse than that <laughs> when you were playing ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Case. All right. The next, um, the next topic we're going to see a few times over the spring here. And the way I wanna tackle the five-year capital improvement plan is have it as an agenda item here. So this today we're gonna to talk about 2022. In two weeks, we'll talk about 2023. The next one, 2024. And by the time we're done, you're gonna see each year. But I think it's almost a little overwhelming for me and you to sit here and talk about five years of projects in one meeting. So it even takes me time to kind of absorb and adjust and kind of focus on how each year affects the following year and then making sure that the budgets um, match where we're at. So for right now- As you bring it to us, can you, we're looking at the first year, when you bring us the second year, can you put the first year above it? Of course. So, and then at, when you go to the third one, then we'll have three in a row. Yep. So that we always got something to look back. With, instead of trying to memorize it. That's what we'll do. We'll, we'll share the five-year capital plan. With them. We don't need the whole thing up front, just as we go through. Okay. So just going through the year 2022, um, I believe that's what you have up here in front. I'm going to kind of stand as we talk. So the, the projects we have in 2022, bottom line, way at the bottom, we're trying to hit a dollar amount that we have previously had um, talked about in years past, we don't want any surprises. And so the total costs of the projects we are anticipating, the cost of the job is about $6,287,954. And so we're being reimbursed due to grants and LRIP funds and all of that. Oh, wait, I must have turned it to move my accent. Okay. We're being compensated or reimbursed once all the project is complete to include a lot of it's our 80-20 bridge cost share stuff and we have two bridges next year. We're gonna receive about $1.4 million back on this 6.2 million. So the county's overall costs we're shooting at right now is about the $4.88 million mark. Um, the projects we're looking at doing, starting at the top is this coming January, um, we're gonna, bid out the County Highway B project, which has been in Amherst, designed by Ayers Associates. Real estate's acquired. Um, the design is 90%. The ps and &E documents that goes to the state are all uh, going to get submitted in August. And then the um, uh, Village of Scandinavia and the consultants are talking briefly right now about the sanitary sewer movement that has to take place. And I haven't gotten um, a lot of feedback on where that's at. All I know is that the design has been given to the village now, and I believe they need to find a contractor to do the work, preferably before August, which is when the PS and E dates become due. So that's that's it's it's probably a two day project. Um, the DNR is involved heavily in that one because the sanitary line runs underneath the river and. According to DNR guidelines, it has to be so many feet below the riverbed, which the current one is not. So there is a design that's looking at lowering it lower than the current one right now, which is <coughs> being designed. It's beyond Casey. So that's more municipal engineering. The next project we've got is the Double B Bridge, which is a monster structure, um, which does not have any utility, uh, underground utility involvement other than um, they're going to bore a new phone line underneath the river, which is a whole different ball game than dealing with sanitary. And that utility contractor does that. 
Um, there will not be any movement of overhead electric. Um, the electric company is just going to put guards on their wires so the crane doesn't accidentally arc to the crane. Um, again, that project is in the same time frame. It's going to get the PSE documents from Strand Associates is going to go to the state for 100% approval. And then in January, that bridge is going to get let out for bid uh, in, in January. So we're going to know who our bridge contractors are in January. I don't do any of that administration on it. That's all handled by the state. So I'm just sitting in the back looking to make sure that our 20% is spent according to um, what we had budgeted. The budget numbers in them dollar amounts are just price per square foot based on projects that have been done in the past. They could come in less. Let's hope they don't come in more, but the state uh, has basically said, we're not gonna fund anything more than our 80%. So. The next project I've got, the third one, is professional engineering um, from Constance Road up to Fulton Street in Ogdensburg. So that's the section going to the north through here. And all that is, is uh, that HRRRP project, high risk rural roads job, that the state approached us and said, hey, we will fund 90% of a project. You fund the other 10% but let's make a safety improvement on this by adding rumble strips, making it up the center line of the road, making sure that the um, road right away is cleared, but that all has to be designed. And so we awarded that project to Robert E. Lee probably a half a year ago, six months ago. And that these are the costs um, that we're going to incur for, for designing it, um, which we have, we have a, we don't, we don't have much involved in it at all. Um, the next project is county, and just, just to back up a little bit, an example of why is this road receiving the funds? It's the most crash worthy road in the 18 counties in our region. And yet you might say, well, what, why? Well, just this morning, Kyle Fisher was coming to work. A guy fell asleep, went off the ditch behind him, like you're drafting a race car passed three cars in the ditch by the pumpkin pads, hit, hit a uh, um, um, driveway, both airbags went off and Kyle pulled over and he's like, what the heck went on? Right there, them rumble strips, if they were in place, might've woke that guy up. He said he fell asleep coming to work. So it, it happens more often than what we know about. And it's scary. So I, I wouldn't even know about it unless the state identified it, which- I, I've never heard that in my life. I'll yeah, that's a dangerous trip. Well, what you just said, you wouldn't think driven it in a lifetime. People are falling asleep going to and from the foundry. Sure you come on it when you come here and eat. Nowadays, I want to go the other way now. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, interesting. Oh, no, I do go that way. Yeah, Look by the pumpkin patch, and you'll see where yep. Kyle got passed by someone at seventy miles an hour in the ditch. Wow. Oh. With a little car. So the the fourth project I have here, number forty eight, is P two. P two stands for the second layer of asphalt to get placed on uh, County Highway N phase one, which is the job we built last year. The, the next project is um, County Highway N from O, just south of Little Creek Road. This is our big construction project that is basically, I always reference it, just going to the Triple O Supper Club. That project originated as an idea to have a uh, um, a sand mine developed at some point for giving sand to the Wapaka Foundry. And slow enough, the sand industry dwindled. Um, they didn't need as much demand. And so the foundry currently is getting their sand from Marcus Sand, and they're not opening up this pit like we thought as soon as they were going to. Um, but our road project didn't fall apart. So we're, it still needs to be replaced. And that's our construction job for this, this summer. As soon as our guys are done building on uh, the town of Caledonia's road, then they're going to O, and that's that's where we'll be. The next project, number 23, is professional engineering on County Highway N from Highway T to Thoma Road. This continues the County Highway N corridor project that we've kind of got going on, um, but we, we have no design for that section. That's 2.12 miles. We're putting it out for RFPs in January of 2022. And then um, the whole right of way acquisition will continue moving along. But if you've been on that section, that's probably one of the worst sections we have in the county. 
heavy farm traffic as, as well. Um, the next project, I've got number 43. It says P1 and P2. That's just where we pulverize and put down um, one layer of asphalt followed by a second layer and the job is done all in one year. That's from double O to Island Road. I've got $750,000 allotted for that job. Uh, we will do some ditching and clearing of some trees, but it's pretty rural out in the middle of a lot of farm fields. Um, we did move some rock fences back already this spring. I don't know if I like the way it turned out. We'll have to revisit that. That's why I have that little note over to the right. Um, I, I don't like the way it turned out. So we only spent a day or two on it with our excavator, but it was a lot of boulders. They don't look right. So anyway, the we charge that work to maintenance for, for right now. The next project I've got is project number 42, which is putting the second layer of asphalt on Highway O from Island Road to T, just up there by Clintonville. That one, that project kind of snuck up on us maybe two or three years ago. If you can recall when I said, we need to do something now. And we just jumped in and we pulverized and repaved two, two roads that were, you know, almost untrafficable in the middle of the construction season due to spring breakup. So um, now we're finally putting the second mat of asphalt on that one. The next project, I got number 37, that's to replace the culvert pipes on County Highway O between Mountain Lake Road and N, or County Highway N. Um, that includes doing some ditching. So I have 180,000 budgeted for that. The reason I've got that is because it's gonna take extensive earthwork from our, earth moving from our crews to redefine a lot of the ditches where the hay fields are up on the top of some big farm fields. And then there's really no ditch to collect any snow load or anywhere to shove snow. So we are having a lot of uh, drifting issues there when we have big snow events. And so we're going to do a little bit more extensive ditching up there on, on County Highway O. And then the culvert pipes will get replaced a whole year ahead of time so that they can go through their first freeze thaw cycle without asphalt over them. Uh, the next project is number 13, P2. Um, that's putting the second mat of asphalt on our construction project from this year. So this year, going up to the Triple O Supper Club, we're only putting one layer. In 2022, we're going to put the second mat. That gives it a year of shifting around due to the, the frost. Um, the next project, we haven't got, a, <coughs> we have not got a, an assigned number to it yet at this point on this sheet, but that's a reclaimed shape and pave project for 1.9 miles. That's from County Highway Double O, uh, Cushion Rider to O. So you're looking at the Triple O Supper Club and now heading kind of north into the west, up through all of them hills and, and so forth, past the Henschels and the Prill Farms and so forth. Again, junk just falling apart. So um, the next project, number 12, is P2, putting a second mat of asphalt or pavement on double O from 110 to Kutchen Rider. That's the other section we did going towards State Highway 110, kind of south of the DuPont Cheese Factory a couple of years ago. And now we're looking to finalize that overlay. The next one is uh, professional engineering budget for next year, which I had a meeting with the City of Marion this morning and Graf Engineering. And we're gonna be putting that out for bids, but I've got budgeted $145,000 um, total cost for engineering. Our portion is gonna be half of it, which would be the 72,500. The other half would be paid for by the city of Marion. So it's gonna be a 50-50 cost share job, similar to um, a job we did in the city of New London a few years ago on Division Street. So real similar, but instead of it being a mile and a half, this one will only be a, a half a mile. That's looking to get put up for bids for engineering firms as soon as well, in, in two weeks from today, I'm going to review the RFP and then another two weeks, it should go out in the paper and it's probably gonna take another month. So I, we're not gonna know what the exact costs are for this project for another two months yet until the engineering firms submit their bids. It's gonna get ripped in half though. 
everything that goes underground, which is your sanitary and your water main design, <laughs> the city of Marion is applying for a community business development grant, which they have been told they've already are going to get it. So that's kind of separate from our project of rebuilding the road. So kind of two separate deals going on. Um, but the city is going to cost share with us on it. And then we at the bottom where it says miscellaneous. I like it. It says $79,834. What I need to uh, look at yet is in the year 2023, I have some reclaimed shape and pave projects where just our crews pulverize and repave. What's really helping us, I believe now, is having some small design projects in there, which help us helps us with our surface, um, <coughs> helps the ride of the road a lot better. They're like $6,000 jobs, $7,000 jobs. And you're gonna see that in Highway Q, Jim, this year. That's one of the first ones we're utilizing a small design assistance where Kyle does all of the survey, we do all of the staking, and then we hire a firm to um, help us create a surface model um, for that job. And so I have some money allotted in miscellaneous for, for that. That's 2022 in a nutshell. The, the following in two weeks from now, we'll talk about 2023. And then that, what you see up here for projects, I wouldn't say has room for a lot of adjustment anymore because we're so close in, in when we said we're gonna do the job and meetings and, and so forth. Once we start looking into 2023, 24, and obviously beyond that, that's where you know you get more of your political push or who can do that job or who needs to do that. But I'm specifically rating this based off of my PASER ratings and we're sticking our money into our worst roads. And O and double O are by far the worst along with that section N. So there's no uh, hidden agendas that Casey has or anyone has on this. It's we're sticking our money in our, into our worst at this time. So. When you do this next time, give it to us in hard copy too. It's hard to look at that chart. Yeah, yeah. I've I've been taking notes as he's talking. Because Is that okay? Is that okay, I've Casey? I've seen it here too. Yep. Can you print off these? Before? We don't need this today. We don't need oh, it. Just this next time. Okay. That will be fine. Okay. Uh, but I mean, it makes easier to see for us. The question by the Prill Farms there, you could take that hill down, or is that not included in there? The hill, the or that yeah, hill and yeah. corner, bad corner. Right now, it's my plan to pulverize it and repave it as is, but soften that curve so that the banking is a lot less than 10% at the bottom. And that's where them small design contracts help us with that. Because yeah. then we learn how to match into them driveways. But as of now, the Prills said that we are not going to be able to cut a whole lot of that hill down without selling them right away, which it's all their favorite deer stands and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. No, I just, I met with them. He's like, good luck, but that's, yeah. Yeah. I just told we're we're going to bucket. We like it the way it is. I always told you deer hunting brings out the worst in people. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted to get it into cutting that hill down, I would have to have more extensive engineering costs involved, which would take us a couple that takes longer with the right well, No, no, that's why, I, that's why I asked if it was going to be included or not. Because You don't need yeah. any approval on this. Okay. No, this is just to show you where we're at. At some point, though, we're going to get to where you, this committee reviews and approves the five-year capital plan, which we're starting, I think, a little earlier here just to start bringing it up instead of shooting it to you all at one shot and say, approve the next five years. So and, uh, what, what could backfire on us on this 2022 stuff 2022's backfiring what what could uh, you what could about, change are so you were worried about anything not getting done on time yeah, what, what if we have a, a you got stuff in scandinavia you got some fall over you know what i'm saying yeah the biggest the biggest thing i can think of the i mean the biggest change that could occur in this is not so much in what we can control which is 13, 13 miles of pulverize in a year and two miles of construction. That's just, that's what we can do. So that's what I'm planning for us to do. What could change is this engineering for the city of Marion. That's what I'm thinking. And the city of Marion project, they may get uh, uh, an estimate for what it's going to cost. And they say, nope, we don't want to do it. But at least that project is being designed. It doesn't mean it has to get built. So I don't think that would even change a lot in our dollar of figures. And what if, what if your townships come to you for 
more things to get done because we didn't have any snow. We could take on about another million dollars worth of pulverize and construction beyond this, okay. which is what we typically get when we have a, a healthy construction. You got this in your plan already, though. It's in the plan already, yeah. Okay. Do, do you know what they can spend that uh, ARP money on? The American Rescue Plan. The I think you're going to hear more about that at County Board. Okay. It was briefly fine, touched from Heidi on finance, but I. We don't have a lot of direction. <coughs> you heard, you know, there's there's yeah, not listen. a lot of direction on it yet. That was an issue. I was out at the Dupont's on Tuesday night, and um, where, what, how much money, where they can use it, and, and I said, right now, nobody seems to know yet. From what I can tell, the plan has to be put together by December 31. At, 2024 and it has to be all spent by December 31 of 2026 or you lose it, you return it. And there's all kinds of- hooks, But not a lot of direction yet. Hooks and requirements and- I don't think the County Highway Department's gonna benefit a whole lot from this initial one, but as soon as that infrastructure bill comes out, that's where we're gonna benefit and other departments won't. So I'm kind of my gut saying, use this one for stuff outside of our department because I'm not even eligible. I don't own any sanitary sewer. I don't own any water main. That's more for what, what we're gonna benefit from it, I believe is an adverse effect of municipalities and stuff receiving funds because all this sewer and all this water is underneath pavement. And so when they need someone to come and pave back over the top of it, we will probably be hired to do some of that work. We're not gonna get funds ourselves to fix our own infrastructure. So we'll, we'll see it as a contractor, but not as fixing our own stuff. I think, I don't know, that's my gut. Sure. The biggest thing is when that becomes available to make sure you have the right people that know how to do the paperwork. And I'm not sure every little village and every little township does have that. Oh yeah, Heidi, she mentioned that yesterday. There's right. a lot of administration stuff that's gotta go on with DUNS numbers and yeah. federal, and, and, and all that stuff isn't too complicated if you have the right staff, but you can see how hard it is to even coordinate moving a simple sanitary line. Yeah. So, right on. Moving forward, review and discuss service agreements. Um, I left this one as a follow-up agenda item. I have nothing specific to talk about on it other than the town of Lebanon put snow plowing bids out for bid, hinted to our foreman to tell me that they wanted to see us bid on it. And I said, no, we're not bidding on snow plowing at this point. Um, that, that's all I really had. I really like talking to, to uh, um, taking the materials out of our service contracts, but I don't have a whole lot of updates on this agenda. Have, have you notified anyone that the materials won't be included? Not until we agree to do that here. So we'll have to make that in a, a formal approval. Um, I have not notified anybody of it. So you want to put that on next month's next time agenda so we get it done then? That way it's ready to go. Yeah. I don't know how you, how do you guys feel, react? That's, that's all right. To the way we discussed at the last meeting to have the materials pulled out, I think. Yeah, so I don't want to wait till the end and then blindside somebody. I always say lay the cards on the table. <clears throat> well, everyone's got a new town chairman, it's not less Procno anymore. So just that's well, right. They, they may be pulling their snowball, snow blowing contract <laughs> with us. That's possible. Yeah. And right now, every township is blowing the doors off of $1,000 per lane mile, just utilizing labor and equipment. They're all doing a good job with that. But I want I wanna present that to you in a format that you can see that. So Chris and I have some homework to do on sucking out all the materials. I kinda did it on that one. Um, do you have that as, oh. I gave you that copy <clears throat> Yeah. materials. Yeah, so I'm just gonna- Do it by the next meeting, just so we're, yeah. it's in our plan that we're thinking, not blindsiding way late, way late. We also will need help from Diane to update the agreement. I kind of have this service agreement up here, but there's you know, that paragraph talks about it. So just, I'm gonna pick on Dick cause he's a town gentleman and the town of Bear Creek so far this year for performing the county providing January, February, March, and April, four months so far, the, the town of Bear Creek has compensated the county um, labor and equipment so far Thirteen thousand eight hundred and eighty-four dollars, and they really—you didn't—we didn't even really do any work for you guys yet. 
So that's indication that you're gonna be able to meet that service agreement if we take out materials. It, it's it's gonna be an, an, an easy one, so. Did you get this work order? I, I didn't receive that work order yet unless Greg Floor did. Because uh, we, we got some big jobs coming up. Yeah. That, I think we just got it yesterday. Yeah. Because we had our town board meeting on Monday and so the town of the town of Matson just came up with about eight hundred and seventy thousand dollars worth of work for us. Um, tonight I'm going to the town of Larrabee's meeting and meeting with them. All these townships are coming up with almost like a quarter million dollars worth of work per township. But that's including the material too. That includes the material too. Okay. So well, why would you not want to include material? Why would I not want to include yeah. material? Because it doesn't benefit our department. Oh, okay. it's just a pass through kind of. We supply it, but we aren't marking it up. We can't mark it up. Because if, if they only got a revenue of 40000 coming out of like Bear Creek there, and they get $80,000 worth of uh, backtop put down someplace, they're way over there. So, you know. I do not want to include revenue because we have a, a person and a truck available to plow snow year round, which is sitting on my budget. About a third of their time should be utilized in the township and some of these towns are hiring us for like one day or two days worth of work for the entire year, excluding snow plowing. And then want us to plow their and snow. And then want us to plow their snow. So town of, town of Mukwa, I'm gonna throw them out there. Hiring everything out during the summer. So why? So I don't wanna be, we're kind of subsidizing on that That's end. That's right, you know, you're, call, you're calling a spade a spade and you can justify that when anybody questions it. Right. Um, Right on. So in the service agreement contracts coming up this year, uh, we agreed already to do what, four or five of them in, was it DuPont? And you, you've got who we just renewed with this year. Yeah, I don't. I don't have the right file folder with me. But all, all five of them, I believe, were like Caledonia, DuPont, uh, Little Wolf, and then there was one lower in the alphabet. I think it was like a village of Big Falls or something like that. But all of them customers have been phenomenal to work with. We have no bad ones this year. Not, not saying that they're bad. And they don't control if they can't hire us because it didn't snow during the winter. It isn't their fault. But really, it's, it's hurting us. So. But Caledonia, Dayton, DuPont, and St. Lawrence, we just signed service agreements that are coming due here this December. Sue, you've sent out Letters. letters to them they haven't responded back with they want to go with us or not so well they're going to go with us because there's nobody out there that wants to do any work and they can't get any employees to do it so they're going to go with us because we've got a crew but we still I, want to be fair I, I think our big issue a lot of times is you get new staff new elected officials they don't understand they've never been involved in it they got their own ideas and all of a sudden they get bombarded by all their citizens and well it's cheaper this way or cheaper that way but they don't understand the whole picture mm -hmm. and we i say we uh, casey or somebody's got to go once in a while after the elections when you know you have new township people to educate them so they understand that this is how it works and this is how it benefits you and also how it benefits the county. You know, you're part of the county, so it's beneficial to, to, to do things with us. Because I know when I started, I was an independent business person, and I thought the county was, you know, expensive. There's other people out there to do the jobs. Well, I've learned that you learned that the county is very important. And that three hundred thousand dollar truck. And I explained it to DuPont Tuesday night. I said that three hundred thousand dollar truck, and you're paying us thirty thousand dollars. We're not coming out ahead on your contract, so help us out all you can. And that's good because Dave Barnick was bucking me a little bit. In yeah. in in, for instance, the town of St. Lawrence, they re, they opened up asphalt paving bids um, a couple weeks ago, and we were eight thousand dollars more in our estimate, and they still chose to go with us. And I called up the town chairman. And I said, "Thank you very much. It's important that you know that." But doesn't mean we aren't going to come in eight thousand dollars less. That was just our estimate. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing, Lee, I, I found with the city of New London, there's in the last two terms, 
we've got six new uh, aldermen. Yep. yep. Some of these are young guys, and they all ran because they were critical of the streets and everything else. And I think they they think they can change it overnight. Yeah. Well, they see the truck go by. Like you talked to me a couple of times. Gee, I got a truck going by with its plow down here, and I got a truck going by with its plow down here, and and. And Casey answered the question very well because it's going to different places yeah. and it's different people coming in. And like, I've always got a friend or two that are complaining. And I still got to clean up. Truck's going by my house twice a day on double G and it's doing nothing. And I I can go the other way and say, and I know I'm on TV right now, but I was at the dog park the other day at six thirty in the morning or quarter to seven. And one of our one of our county trucks pulled in. Two guys got out and went in and got the stuff out of the convenience store they needed and left. They were there a whole five minutes. I was very happy to see it. They they did everything right, but the wrong guy coming down the road and said, why could they stop there and get something? Well, they're gonna work all day long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But I just thought I'm gonna sit here and see how long it took. It didn't take five minutes and maybe somebody had to go to the bathroom too. You know what I'm saying? But I see nothing wrong with that. That's part of living and doing your job. And it was done with dignity. And I compliment Casey and our highway department for something like that too. You know, it's, other people look at it the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? It's always easy to be a critic. <laughs> so that's all I had for service agreements. Um, I'm going to keep it up there. I think in two weeks we'll provide you with removing um, a lot of the materials and see where they would have fit in in the last five-year average. So if we sign a service agreement with the town for five years, we don't pick apart one year because it was real mild. We say, all right, we got, we're committed for the next five years. And if your average of labor and equipment over the next five years didn't meet our requirement, then we're heavily going to look into not being with you. But most of them are way beyond where we're at. So Bear Creek concluded. They're all good. I just, I want to take the materials up for those one or two that just don't recognize. Look at them. Next item is kind of all over the board, which is reviewing the 2021 financial updates. And one of the key parts to reviewing our <coughs> 21 financial updates is, is this equipment? Yes. Yeah, so let's go through equipment, our equipment operations. It's very important to share with you that in the first time in the last 20 years, we took a a loss on our equipment. The first time in 20 years we took a loss on it, but you it's a direct reflection of building a new highway shop. Yeah. Overhead cost was over the what, second to last column as we were. Overhead way on the right, see how it skyrocketed to 836,000 way on the for that had a lot to do with snow plowing in November and December. Too. Some of it was snow plowing. Some of it was snow plowing. Your overhead costs are right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three hundred thousand dollars. Well, like yeah, almost three hundred thousand dollars. Which, if you take that three hundred thousand dollars difference and go back to two hundred thirty-six, mm -hmm. you actually made money. If if you went to build a new shop, yeah. yeah. The bad winter or slow winter. winter. Yeah. So I'd be, yeah. By the way, the old shop is for sale. If you guys want it back, I drove by there the other day. It's what? The old highway shop is for sale. If we want it, can back. we get it at a good deal? I don't know. Doesn't look like anything's in the office either. Doesn't look like that's being used either. Who bought it? Uh, so in in our realty world, bought the the old office part. You can see the twenty one year average for revenue. We were actually above oh. revenue for our twenty one year average. In everything. you kind of expected that, didn't you? I mean, we were warned from Heidi it was coming. Yeah, now here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Heidi? It was here all along, but um, I don't think we were showing it as detailed as we are have been lately. Or maybe I didn't understand it as much as I do now, but that's why all these presentations and stuff, I think, have been somewhat important over the spring. And you got a pretty good handle on stuff for the future, too, now, so we know. That column way to the right, which says units, that's hours charged, right, Chris? Hours of operation, yeah. Uh, hours of operations on our iron or equipment. You can really tell when you had brutal snow events. And I can remember plowing in 2006 and 2000, or I'm sorry, 2009. Um, I was deployed in the year 2012 and 13. You can see how high I missed plowing that in them years. <laughs> and just an equipment operations chart is important to see. Talking more about equipment, 
in, and I don't have the 2022 purchase plan in front of me, but we've already committed to the two Kenworth trucks that have been put out. And we've also have to pay for the other half of our asphalt paver. And so I don't think there's much more room to buy anything else in 2022. And what what is coming due, or if I could fit one more thing in, it would be um, like a, a patrol truck. But right now we're at our max based off of the revenue profit we generated and our depreciation on our equipment. We're there with paver and two trucks. So that's important for us to make myself and Mark aware of the what the plan is so that we know what we need to maintain for next year. You know, when you talk about patrol trucks and vehicles aren't available, there's nothing out there. I mean, you can sell your used truck for more than a new one goes for, yeah. so it might be a good year to hold off. Yeah. And run them an extra year. Yeah, you know, it's going to be hard to get deals. Steel is uh, not plentiful, and uh, there's no chips either. To oh, build them. Oh. So, in that, if you can look at them columns way in the bottom where it says grand total, so far this year in 2021, we had a budget of one million five hundred and sixty-seven. Can you make that bigger, please? I can't really see it good. I'll lose other stuff, but. Way, okay. way at the bottom, we had a column. we have a budget of of, of one point five six seven million, and we've spent over to the right one point two three nine million. The reason that we haven't spent all of it this year is we we've been pay, making monthly payments on that paver so far. We owe them one hundred and seventy three thousand dollars this year, and we've only paid them thirty five thousand of it. So you can see one hundred and forty thousand of that is allotted for that pay, <coughs> paver yet. Yeah. Are you hearing anything on that right now? The paver, um, our crew went to do a demo on a different one, identical, uh, on Monday. We sent all of our guys there. Um, and we also had to do a demo. Where was that? Mosinee we sent them to? Or was it Wausau? To, over to Wausau? To Fabric Cat and Wausau. And so our guys got their hands on it. Ours is in Milwaukee right now but we're still waiting on that one part to finish the screed off on our paver. It's planned to come next week. So what the part came for the other screeds. So they're t thinking of taking a used screed and putting it on our paver and shipping it here next week. And when our new screed shows up with that part sitting in a conics box somewhere where it can't get offloaded, um, then once that new one shows up, then it'll get attached to our new front end of our paver. I reached out to the DOT and Joe, you were CC'd in on that. Right. I, the the right. DOT did give us uh, um, an, an ex extra three months. So if we don't hit our sunset date of June 30th, of putting down 27,000 tons, I, I gave them my uh, um, crying speech, yeah. a, a reality speech. And they said, now you have until September 30th. We'll, we'll give you that uh, buffer. So they gave us an extra July, August, they give us an extra three months, which will help us. I think it's a good idea though, to take advantage of that used Absolutely. part. And so yeah. we've got nice dry weather and who knows what'll happen later on. And and it, it'll be on their dime to switch it out when the new one comes in. So Otherwise we're gonna have to rent one. We don't wanna do that. As of today, right now, Thursday, May 13th, our paver is coming next week. I haven't heard anything different. Yep. So we're still getting that one with the used screen on the back of it. Sure. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, that doesn't, you know, I buy a lot of used stuff. <laughs> other, way. Mm -hmm. other financial updates, Sue, have we got anything on the screen that I did not touch on? Um, those, those reports I gave you, if you want to show those. Yeah, let's, let's touch on them right now. This would be a good time. So this is basically where we're sitting on our maintenance dollars. Um, way over to the right, you can see our budget for overall maintenance this year was 3.29, 3.2 million. We've spent um, basically half of it. So there's 51% of our budget remaining. That has to take into account that we loaded our guys on our county maintenance this spring because we weren't doing anything else for the towns. So we probably spent more than normal on maintenance because our guys were nowhere to be chargeable to the towns due to no snow plowing. So, but we did, and, and we've been charging uh, um, the wetland mitigation bank project to maintenance. Um, 
Next, next slide is service agreements with, with, our, with our customers. It's too early in the year to even tell them, right? But we're basically under budget with our service agreement customers, about $42,000 compared to last year at this time. And then our municipalities without service agreements, we're under budget for compared to last year, about 14,000. So overall, all of our townships compared to last year or municipalities we serve were, were under last year's revenue, about 57,000. We haven't done a lot with our construction projects. And so we just talked about maintenance and that top block. And now that bottom block is all of our construction jobs for this year. You can see we've only spent 5% of our 4.6 million, um, but I'm very, very confident that it's gonna start increasing hugely here as Highway B has been pulverized. We're gonna start paving next week. Our, it's gonna start climbing as summer is getting closer. So looks like we're, we're on the right track. And that would, that would be it for our financial updates at this point, so. Good, moving forward, personnel, employee updates, resignations, retirements, recruitments, anything going on? The only retirement we have right now is June 3rd is Kent Gerard's last day. You, Joe, you signed his resolution. I don't know if anyone else did too. So he, Kent is planning on being here on June 10th, which is a week after he retires for us to present that to him and then you know, do the highway resolution thanking him for his years of service. I think he had 23 years um, to 21 years. Um, next week, Monday, we have a seasonal employee start with us. How many of them are joining next week? Two, three. So who are they? Are they? Anna, Josh, and Tom. All returning. All returning from last year. So next week, you're going to see our seasonal people, which is perfect because it'll line up flagging for traffic control. And plus, the grass is growing a lot in our medians and that miscellaneous mowing stuff. And then our full-time truck drivers are going to be back in the trucks. And our summer kids are going to be back out mowing medians and stuff. So that'll help us with that. So the timing is right, fortunately. Um, the other seasonal employees are going to start falling in very shortly that week after week after week until we have all seven or eight of them. I forget how many off the top of my head, but I think there was seven. Um, three of them are engineering assistants. One in particularly I'm going to use for GIS upgrading on our maps and our greenway stuff and um, um, culvert inventory in creating my own snow fence map updates. So, Logan McHugh, which is Chad McHugh's, our construction foreman's kid, is going to be working with myself and Jason McKeefrey through the summer. And then he'll jump in with Kyle and do engineering related stuff. And then the other uh, engineering student, which is Don Krause's son, located at the clerk of courts, he'll be starting with us. But they've taken baseball season a lot further into the early summer, so he won't be joining us um, we we're giving him leeway. We're not, you know, we're not, we're saying you can work with us, but if you got to play baseball to finish your season up, go do that instead. And that's awesome. And then the other one is Josh Reich. And Josh was a wrestling, a wrestler from Amherst. He's going to school for architectural engineering. Um, he worked for Kyle all last year and he's going to be with us right away staking with Kyle on construction jobs. So there's a mix of what we're doing, even though we have three engineering assistants. So Okay. Um, Travis Marquardt, his nickname is Bubble, <laughs> what, Bubba, Bubba. Yeah, Bubba, he'll be with us again. Um, Bryce Upperman, Dean Upperman's son will be back with us again. And Anna Holder has been with us for two summers and over the last winter. So a lot of, a lot of, at least we're not training everyone brand new, which has happened over the past couple of years. And, Bryce is at school down at, was it Sun Prairie going to that? Day? The equipment operator school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Commissioner's report, project updates. So in the commissioner's report, which I have here. I don't, I don't have it. But we'll just read it off. You got my report? Pass this to him. Sure. Here's the commissioner's report. Um, in the commissioner's report, um, important dates to remember for us 
on May 19th, so I'm looking at Jim Nygaard right now. Okay. May, May 19th, we must get Dave Mork and me together to listen in to a um, seminar on where funding is available or not available. And it's a three hour presentation that he may or may not benefit from it, but I want him, if, if he's not being proactive on finding stuff, he needs to learn a little bit more about it. And so if you could help me reach out to Dave, and say May 19th, it's, it's online. He can sit at home and do it and we'll share that info with him, but he can at least listen in to a, on a funding seminar. Would that, what is Dave Mark? Village uh, president for Scandinavia. Okay. That's what I want to know. Yep. Mm -hmm. The reason we're at, we're wanting Dave there is because the state has a mill and overlay coming through Main Street, Scandinavia, but they don't cost share the funds of parking. And I can't find anywhere to find parking assistance funds. And you know, Scandinavia, the whole thing's parking lot. Yeah. And we're trying to find money to help them. And so we're pushing the idea, can we convert them to bike lanes, which then would be eligible for OT, right? OT funding and all any avenue we can get to help them replace that. So can any of the townships get in on that? Everyone can get involved if they want to. Sue sent the invite to them all. They, they get it sent from the state and it's really yeah. not LRIP only. It's it's actually other grants. Okay. It's probably like five or six that were on there from the DOT and they get sent to the, the town, okay. to the municipalities. So they, they know about it. Yeah. So they should. There's a couple guys in the wild Barnick and then that Bob Brown, that Bob Brown is into, I'll, I'll talk to him. Okay. He should have got an email to about him. It, yeah, else. I'll just reinforce it that it, oh, it's worth watching. <laughs> if, if I understood Matt Halliday right at East Central on the state DOT projects, uh, they will pay for bike lanes, the DOT will. So that might be something for us to kind of lean. I don't know that we want a bike trail on every state road if there's a lot of traffic, but if we can benefit from at least getting paved shoulders in effect out of the deal. Uh, I just see all these roads where the, the pavement quits right where the wheel of the semi is on the edge of the pavement and doesn't take long and it's all cracking off. But if you got that extra. Four, the minimum is four feet for a bike lane. The max is six feet. So it, a lot of them become full reconstruction jobs just to hold that much more pavement up. And they don't reimburse that much for the re full reconstruction. They're just doing so much for the bike lane. They'll provide money towards the bike lane portion of it. But, the, but if it's a state road like 110 or 49 or and the way I understood it, that was DOT. That wasn't on us. us right? That's where I can fit in a 26 foot wide road and still satisfy the bike lane requirement. Sure. By paving, uh, by painting 11 foot lanes. And then it gives me four feet on each side, like by highway I from Clintonville from the shell station, I can put 11 foot lanes in and I'll still, ha I'll still be safe with a four foot lane, which satisfies the bike lane requirement. And, um, then the county bike route can actually be on a map because it's a safe route considered by the state. Just the improvement in visibility and, and everything just from the wider road, uh, even if there isn't a lot of bikers, but if they down the road, somebody wants to do more biking and this gas keeps going up in price. But the big question on I out there was well, I'm everybody's front yard is all right away. Maybe I'll yep. you know, remember they, we looked at that a little bit mm -hmm. further out. We, we bought a lot of right away on I. We, we bought an 80 foot corridor where typically they're 66, 66 feet. So it's going right. I mean, but I think that's important. Maybe he won't benefit anything and won't get a penny, but at least he sees that there's options out there versus people just doing it for him or any of these towns. I, I think I'll, I'll get a hold of some of the trustees and maybe Renee Smith too. The clerk. The whole clan together. Yeah. So that they're all in on it. Just to, and, and, and for their village streets in the future. Yep. It's a one-time deal. Just think how long it'll go before it happens again. Well, no, th this isn't this isn't a one this isn't the one-time deal thing. This is just the programs offered every other year by the state. The infrastructure thing is a whole different thing. So this okay. this is them not knowing anything about the, the trainings that are happening all the time anyway. 
The next one, I think important date was June 7th through the 9th is the Wisconsin Dells Road School. Um, everyone signed up that's going to it. We've got our, we have our rooms booked yet. Um, that is a, and we talked about it at finance, that is a Wisconsin Counties Association sponsored uh, event. And so- And you're giving a presentation. Man. Given the presentation. Yep. That's good. What's involved if, if say, I just want to drive over there for a day? You just show up. You don't have to register. We've done that before. Joe's just came, showed up, walked through the vendors. You don't have a name tag on you, but if you're hanging out with me or any, we know everyone. They're not going to bother you. They ain't going to bother you. Okay. Yep. They figure for you the first. <laughs> no. <laughs> You change yeah, your, if you know change your name and you can they ask if you hear what he said no <laughs> say it again they ask him if he knows who bring and ask if you know bartell <laughs> <laughs> buddy yeah but so let's say for instance right now you may or may not randomly show up right now we have approval for the committee members to attend that meeting sure. um if joe gives permission you can attend it and then i believe then he is he compensable for the permission yes you give permission and then he's compensatable for it i okay. came up in our meeting yesterday yep. about stuff but if you randomly show up at an event like say these monday morning events that are showing up the only uh, thing we're all approved of is the annual convention annual conference fact, that's the only thing Otherwise, the chair of a committee has to approve you to go. You know, I wouldn't hard be because I'm a real believer in this. If, if uh, <laughs> there's an agenda out already, I suppose on what's on on each day. So, if I can get away for a day, then I'd try and pick a day that would be most beneficial. Tuesday would be your best. Tuesday, day. June eighth, when I give the presentation, would probably be <laughs> all right. That way you can critique me. But no cat calls or anything in the back. I've already heard the presentation twice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Revised it. Yeah. Oh, okay. The, the main thing is uh, trying to get a meal ticket. You know, Otherwise you might have to go downtown to McDonald's. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of places in. to get a sandwich in the Dells. So. They don't check in on that. Don't no. even worry. Be right. Just, you know, I, our predecessor, Bob Fleece, I think the world of him, uh, he expected us to go. Dick, he laid it right on us right away, right? Yep. <laughs> he expected us because he's a real believer in that stuff, and I am too. So, um, the other stuff, uh, the HR committee, I really don't have a whole lot of updates there other than I hear from the, the thing is, masks are encouraged now, they're not required. So, obviously, we're not wearing any here today. Um, traffic safety committee, I have. No updates as we plow through summer. If we do need to set one up, we'll, we will. But right now, the next one is end of the year in December. The Larrabee RFP. So I have a meeting at 11 o'clock to meet face to face with Keeney Architects, who we approved for, was it $8,500 or $8,900? I forget what it was, but that's going to be our first face to face sit down meeting with myself and Mark Korth on the Larrabee shop space needs assessment. And Mark has all the data that they need to get started. And we're gonna meet the person that is heading it up. Putting together unit 1180 yet. Um, pavers still coming next week. Our mowers are pretty much ready to go. I think one more has the flail attachment is getting fixed on it. In our field operations, highway double B is pulverized. Um, crews are pretty much done patching for the spring breakup. We're still doing crack filling on a lot of townships right now. Our big construction crews are in the town of Caledonia uh, in Woodland Hills. Um, County Highway double. So coming up here in two weeks, we're gonna be chip sealing around the chain of lakes on Q and double Q and trying to get that all done before Memorial weekend and cleaned up and painted. So it looks good when the busy traffic shows up. So. Um, if it rains or something happens and it's still a mess out there, that's the risk we take when there's a lot of people going on. But we're trying to get that done early on in the year. Um, part of is administration and engineering. Um, I did agree with Westwood to do some soil borings on the county old box culvert project that they're designing for us. The reason they were doing soil borings now is because to determine what type of footing is necessary, they want to know when they're going to hit mud versus good stable soil, which determines the spread footings that are placed underneath these structures, which are proposed to be concrete at this time. 
and then they would all fall within the 20 foot wide bridge span program. Right now, none of them do because they're all like 18 feet or 19 feet. So none of them are reimbursable from the state. So we're gonna design them to be at least 20 feet. But we need to determine what type of footings there are. So that was an extra, I think $8,500 I agreed to, which we still have 30,000 in the budget for it. And our Westwood engineering cost only came in at 20,000. So I still had that $10,000 buffer. Um, we've already talked about most everything on the construction projects earlier on. And I don't have a whole lot more updates than what I've already ch shared with you guys. So I, I don't need to go through every project because we already talked about them. Um, the Wapaka River Wetland Mitigation Bank. So one of the things we're doing this year is a hydrology studies where we took these 11 PVC tubes and stuck them in the ground. And then we put these data loggers in them and they monitor the height of the water. And every day it takes a, a snapshot photo of what the elevation of the water is four times a day for the next three months. And all of that data gets logged to show us what the height of the hydric soils are underneath the surface. And that will help us determine um, if a tamarack tree or a cedar tree or these lowland, um, what type of plants we wanna plant out there are gonna meet the requirements based on the elevation of the water. And we've also taken a whole bunch of trees as sample trees and they're planted out there right now, not in the farming area, but in the lowland area to determine if tamarack will actually grow before we put 10,000 trees out there. Let's try with a few species and see which ones take and which ones don't take. Well. When we put the PVC tubes out there, there's nine of them in Joan Lee Farms' area. And so we marked them with 10 foot tall PVC tubes with white and orange uh, reflective tape on it so that if he's combining the corn in the fall, he can see them at night. And then he made a small comment that this is gonna take up some of his acreage, but each PVC tube isn't anything more than I could wrap my arms around. So. I don't think he's gonna lose any more than one to two acres based on swinging around them all to, to miss them. And he met with our sign foreman, Scott Jolney met with Rick Stibbs to, to talk about avoiding them. Cause each one of those data loggers, we've probably got three to $4,000 per data logger investment from paying the engineer to put it out there, buying the data logger. So we do not want them to get wrecked. So. That kind of concludes what I've got. Okay. I guess that's it. We have a motion to adjourn. You got anything to discuss before we adjourn? We are adjourned. All right. Good deal. Fred, did you cut your grass? Yeah. Did she start right up? Any moisture ready? <laughs> <laughs>